Hi guys. Um, today I prepared a little different video compared to previous ones. Um, unfortunately, this one the engines can solve, but I still find this pawn end game very interesting and instructive because due to its, uh, how to say, irregularity or um, it's not straightforward by no means. So uh, if you wish to solve this one, I suggest that you pause the video and put, all, put the chessboard and analyze. Um, I think you will enjoy the answer. All right. So let's see what is going on. Usually pawn end games with pawns on one side and kings on the other side are pretty straightforward, right? The first one to go, well, has huge chances to win. It either wins or a draw, right? So usually it's a race. Usually in the real game, it's like some pawns got exchanged on the queen side and then they race back to the king side to, uh, to, to win the game. Uh, by the way, if you have a distant past pawn, I would recommend um, not to give it up immediately, but fix the uh, the others, let's say king side in this case, and only then um, march with the king, just to avoid any uh, any confusion with pawn moves on the other part of the board. So in this position, what what would be the most natural way to proceed? Right, to race with the king. So let's see what happens. King b4, king b3. Let's race with the most obvious way. So. Let's say king f5, king f6 also an option. What should black do? It's king f2, the pawn is hanging. White goes g4. And now if black continues king g2, now white is winning, right? That's it. If black tries king h3, white is still winning with king h5. And this is like a mutual soup swank. If it's white to move, it's a draw. If it's black to move, white wins. So. King g2 loses, but luckily for black, black can go king uh, f3. It seems it's quite unusual that it's black to move, right? And yet white is winning. Usually the first one to run is better. It's due to the fact that these two pawns are adjacent one to another and white can eat them both really quickly. But here, king f3, I'm going to promote that line. King f3, and this is a Tsukswank. If it's white to move, white actually white has to be careful now. Uh, h3 now loses because black is the first one to capture the pawn, right? So uh, now king g6 uh, leads to a draw. I'm gonna promote that again. Takes, 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 right? So, but if you look closer at this position, hopefully you would realize that hey, if it was black to move, black doesn't have a move. Right? If it was black to move, black would go king g2, we would go king g6, and we've seen this position. If black goes, we went king g2 here, and king g6 wins for white. Luckily for black, there's king f3, and now it's white to move, and white, well, if moves the king, loses the pawn, if moves the pawn, black is winning suddenly. So it may seem that it is a draw, right? Uh, well, g3 just doesn't work because these two pawns are adjacent, and black can. Black is just, well, it's just winning here. So g3 is just silly. So it seems like it's a draw, right? We erase and then g4, um, nice triangle for black, giving move to white and it's a draw. But then you can think, hey, if he has that triangle, I still need to reach g6 square. I can go to f6, right? And if black does the same, king f2, g4, if black goes king g2, king g6, we transpose to previous line. If white, black goes king f3, now we go king f5, and it's black to move, and white wins. So you may say, haha, king f6, clever, clever move, and I'm still approaching the pawns, and that's, that's a win. But then if you give it a second, you will realize that black has moved g4, and uh, if king g6, it's king f2, well, king h6, king g2 draw, g6, king g2, white even loses, right? So um, white has to be careful here. So due to g4, it is a draw, king f5, king f2, I suppose, 
here takes h4 and I go around if you go king h5 I go king g3 if you go h5 king g3 king f5 king e5 king g6 and it's a draw that's a draw so let's come back a little bit um king f2 takes yeah this is a draw so then g4 and black can hold this one after g4 it is a draw so you may think well what you're gonna do i tried king f5 i tried king f6 that's that's a draw but if you th realize that king f5 king f3 this position is of mutual tsukzwang even if it's black to move that tempo doesn't matter you would think hey if that tempo doesn't matter here like i cannot if i go g4 now by the way you will con you should consider this move g4 now i'm very surprised because pawn end games are very difficult even with two pawns there's a pawn end game with uh, two pawns each there's a pawn end game with one pawn each which is also quite difficult maybe maybe i'll show a video later it seems like come on these are just pawns and kings but there are so many so many beautiful details brilliant details so g4 seems like a move to consider right if king f3 king f5 we reach the tsukzwang with black to move not white to move but black is smart again black would go king f2 if we go king f5 black goes king f3 giving the move to white if white avoids king f6 now it's king g2 king g6 oh hold on ah my bad that's my bad that's my bad after g4 white is winning after g4 white is winning ah yes that's correct i forgot about that if king f3 king f5 if king f2 it's king f6 exclamation mark and we approach the king side king g2 king g6 and we win king goes to h3 go to h5 king goes to f3 it's both h3 and king f5 are winning so aha uh -huh, but i play g4 but if you look at this position closely let me see let me see wow that's a tricky position i'm not using engine and i didn't get my sleep today uh that's not that easy to understand yes g4 um yeah king f3 king f5 and white is winning so you would think that uh, that black is winning in this position right you would think that black is winning here my bad white is winning here after g4 I got confused a little bit. I got confused. This is a very difficult endgame. Oh my god. Oh my god. Black can go king e2 in this position. You shouldn't give up that easily on black's position. Black goes king e2. And if white goes g4 now, it's king e3. And it's white to move. And it seems like, but what difference does it make? What difference does it make? It is a, always a good question to ask yourself. What if it was my opponent's move? Does it make any difference? In this case, it seems ridiculous, right? Uh, it's white to move, white is just approaching. The problem is, the problem is if king f5, king f3, it's white to move. We know this position already. If white goes king f6, seems logical. But king f2 loses, but black goes king f4, exclamation mark. And that's it, that's a draw. h3 even loses and king g6, it's a draw. So it is a surprising mutual tsukzwang, which is extremely unusual to pawns being on one side. Usually you should rush, rush as fast as you can to the king side. This is not the case. In this position, if it's white to move, white cannot move the king to the closer. King f6, king f4, king f5, king f3, both uh, lead to a draw and h3 even loses. So 
once you realize this, you would realize that black has to go king e2 here, still approaching, right? So black is still approaching. The white goes king f5, black goes king e2, f2, g4, king f3, transposing to yet again to the same Zugzwang. If you go g4 now, we come back to e3, like unbelievable, unbelievable triangle. Here you go, you make the move, because it is critical to meet king f6 with king f4. And if white goes king f6, black goes g4. We have seen this position before. And the king was on e3, but in this case it doesn't matter because the king goes to f2 anyway. Wow, this is difficult. When you realize that, that here king e2 and I don't have my g4, once hopefully you would realize that g4 is a very good idea and we can actually give up that tempo hopefully you would consider playing g4 in the starting position this is extremely hard to comprehend i believe even i just screw it up a little sorry guys so you would consider g4 which is should be ridiculous right why give a move away but uh, when you consider the straightforward line and you realize hey only g4 wins here because it's black to move and black king has to approach to f3 and then I go to f5 and it's his move which is surprisingly in my favor and I win you would realize hey but maybe I start with g4 immediately because if you don't start with g4 immediately let me jump to this position here the only move for black is king e2 because after g4 we need to be standing on e3 and this is a draw you would realize that there's a the whole the whole set of mind fields are here in this position wow this is difficult to under, to explain and even to understand myself the thing is the only move that is winning is g4 if white goes king b5 black goes king b2 two exclamation marks and now if the king is rushing, we keep the, op well, it's not even an opposition. There are two squares between us, but we have to go closer. And here we've reached this position where it's a draw. King b2 is the only move to make a draw in this position. However, if you start with g4, you win this opposition. You win this opposition. If, if, if black goes to f3, we need to go to f5. So black would go king b2 here and the only move that is winning for white here is king b6 let me let me explain why if we go king b5 king c2 king here king here king here king here king here king here giving the move to us we already know it's a draw but if we keep the long opposition and do the same this is ridiculous if black goes here it's here we've seen this position if black goes f2 i avoid this square i have to avoid this square and i actually have to avoid e5 square because if i go to e5 here it's king f2 oh my bad king e3 keep forgetting this and it's my move and apparently that's bad that's ridiculous because king f6 met with king f4 so I have to keep the long opposition to win this one. G4 is the only move that is winning here. King B3, we just keep going with King B5. That's fine. That's fine because in this critical position, it's black to move. And we know if it's black to move, we win. If it's white to move, it's a draw. If black tries to do this, we say, uh-uh, I'm going here. And if you go here, I'm not approaching because the king cannot reach the square. I go here and if king f3, king f5, it is white, it is black to move. And if black tries to stay next to this square, well, there, this is just winning like this. I'm just faster to collect the pawns. So the whole fight, eventually you realize that I will not win without g4 move. And then you realize that I shouldn't step on f5 because he would step on f3 and that would be a draw. The same goes if I step to e5, he steps to e3 and uh, with my move, it's a draw, with his move, I win. 
So I have to give him the move. If he goes, I go g4, if he goes king b2, I go king b6. This is ridiculous. If black goes king b3, if you don't believe me, feel free to check with the angel. King b3, the only move to win here for white is king b5, keeping this vital opposition. We have to win this opposition until we reach these squares. Well, win is a strong word. We have to, in fact, lose this one. We have to, yeah, we have to lose the opposition here. King c2, it's king c6. King c3, it's only king c5. Because if I go with king d5, king d3, king e5, king e3, it should be black to move here. This, which is still, I still find it hard to comprehend. Okay. You can see the engine evaluation right now. I'm going to come back to the starting position for those who don't believe me without engine. g4 is the only winning move and the ridiculous winning mechanism goes as follows. King b2, it's king b6. I'm going to promote this line. King b3, only king b5, king c2. And this is an excellent defense for black. This is the only route for a win like this avoiding this is critical this in this position it's not my move this is critical king f2 king f6 king f3 king e5 it's his move now he has to decide whether he's going here or keeping threats right here and white is winning wow i hope i hope you could understand my explanation i had to explain it to myself at one moment um I don't know any other position where this this uh, move g4 would would win, keeping in mind these uh, mind squares. The first to step on it well loses half a point basically. The, the the beauty is that if the pawn is on h7, white just rushes to the king side. If the pawn is on h3, uh, if the pawn is on h3, I just rush to the king side. Ah no. One second, if the pawn is on h3, it is a draw because the critical g3 square is not taken. So this is very outside of the box position, especially with pawns on one side. Usually you see opposition and uh, corresponding squares and mind squares. Um, on, the, on one part of the board where the kings are there, but when they are rushing to the king side, but they have to choose the route. g4 only moves that as wins. If king b5, it's king b2, exclamation mark. And king c6, it's king c3, king d6, king d3, king e6, king e3, king f6, g4. g4 is a critical move. Okay. So it is very surprising that in this starting position you have to start with g4 move. Let's say you go first, like oh my god. And then not, you just rush, but you choose a square to go to. You keep the opposition and king b3, again you shouldn't rush, which is, I still find it beautiful and ridiculous at the same time. It's only king b5 that is winning here. And this is the route to come closer. This is the only move that is winning, and now it's winning. Now it is winning, now we know what is going on. Till this day, it still bothers me. <laughs> How is that possible? It doesn't make sense. I hope I made a little sense to you today, and I hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe. See you in a week.